Morning, YouTubers. On today's episode, we are going to be covering lap welds, where one piece of metal lays over the other. So this is video five in my How to Stick Weld series. And in this video, we're going to be focusing mostly on the actual welding techniques of lap welds and less to do with the theory on how to stick weld. So if you don't know how to stick weld or you're new to this, trust me, watch my other videos first. Get a feel for it. Do what I said in them. Practice, practice, practice. And then after, you know, who knows, a couple days or a week or two, when you're ready and you're able to weld straight lines like I got on this plate over here. Grab it. So when you're able to run overlapping bead on bead and fairly straight lines and have no issues starting, when you're conquered that and you're pretty decent, then start this video up, watch it, and start practicing and do what I'm doing here. So let's get into it. I have quarter inch plate here. If you have 332nd or excuse me, 316th plate, that'd probably be a little bit easier for you to learn because this is going to be a little tricky in order to deposit a single weld that's roughly the size of what we want, especially since we're using 6013. 6013 does not deposit as much of a weld as like 7018 does. So we're really going to have to feed a lot in there. If all you have is 3 16 plate or even 3 32nd rods rather than the eighth that we're using, that's fine. You can do that. It's just you're going to have maybe a little bit easier time if your plate's thinner, but the thinner rods are a little bit harder to run than the eighth. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to tack it on both sides. I'm going to use a used rod I got here. I have my machine set for 120 amps. which is probably on the high side for this rod. I noticed I had hot start in uh, arc force up pretty high on this. I was wondering why the tack seemed pretty hot. So I disabled all of that. So I'm welding much the same as if you got an old tombstone or very simple welder. One of the hardest things with stick welding is to be comfortable or get the proper alignment. Now, because of this camera over here to my right, it's going to be very difficult for me to carry this rod and stinger and not have the plate interfere with it as I flatten out. It's going to want to change my rod angle to straight up and down. And I definitely don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slightly reposition the camera and I'm just going to bring this out closer to the edge. There we go. Back up a little bit. Now, obviously, in a real world, you can't always reposition your work to help you. If you have the option of doing so, great. Otherwise, you may have to take and do some crazy things. Like, I'll show you a couple pointers here. You can always take the rod and come out at an angle like that and then run it like this. That way, the bottom of your stinger doesn't hit your table or whatever else you're working on. And then, of course, you always have the option straight out the front and then to weld it like this. That's always an option. So keep that in mind. Let's get some welding done here now.
No, I can tell you already that I'm willing to bet there's going to be some slag inclusion right here in the halfway point, and then there's going to be a little bit up here about a quarter of the way through. 6013, which I'm not really the best at welding with, a lot better at 7018. The flux has such a tendency to run ahead of your rod that I almost find on a weld like this, I really have to tip the rod back to keep the arc force pushing it this way to where it doesn't get in front. But we'll see what it looks like. The slag mostly peeled itself here for a lot of it, so that's good. Actually turned out better than I expected. So right here where you can see where the bead widened out and kind of ate away a little bit at the top toe. That right there was where the slag was kind of bubbling around. Pretty difficult to control but the rest of it looks uh, really good I would say overall. When you look at this, you can tell the heat affected zone, that line is almost completely straight. That's what you wanna see. Now, if your material isn't as clean as this, you're never gonna see that. Like if you're welding over mill scale, you're not gonna see that, that's all hidden. But uh, I gotta say, that's better than I expected. Not too bad. I'm gonna quench this in a bucket to cool it off. Now, I decided to start using a bucket just so that I could sort of put this video on fast forward. Well, this is, uh, the water's kind of vaporizing off this. I wanna talk about that a little bit. It's all right in training. If you quench your piece in a bucket, that way you can run passes faster over it. That's okay, but never under any circumstances, quench anything that's you, you, like you're working on. I don't care if it's the simplest, like some part of a trailer, doesn't matter. Anything that needs to be strong, so anything outside of practice, don't quench because it will negatively affect the weld and the steel that's around it and it will take away strength and you may have a catastrophic failure of it. We don't want that. So now that this is cool enough, I'm just gonna give it another minute for the water to evaporate since there probably is some water in that plate down in there. And then uh, we will run a second pass. So I got it dialed in here, it's all dry. Still running the same 120 amps. We're gonna run a second pass and then we're gonna look at it. All right, so I cooled this down a little bit. Let's take a look.
the main goal that we're looking here, and this weld is a little bit convex where it's kind of like a scoop. I'm running it a little bit on the high side at 120 amps, to be honest, for this rod. So that's partially why. The flux on the rod also does not deposit any iron powder that turns into a weld like a 7018. So a 6013 is gonna have a tendency to be more of a concave rather than a convex weld. We wanna see the weld go from the bottom plate to the top plate and just hit the edge, which for the most part, I did a pretty good job here. I cut away a little bit right there and a little bit right there. Ooh, that's hot still. Not too bad. Again, I'll take a side profile. Not too bad for a single pass on quarter inch. That's about what we're looking for. Now, let me cool this off a little bit more. And I'll talk a little bit about rod angle. Rod angle is really important. Now, this plate is so thick being quarter inch material that I was able to deposit a weld for part of it. I mean, and it just got up to the edge there. If you're welding on much thinner material, say like three sixteenths with the same eighth inch rod, you're gonna have a tendency to actually come up over the edge and or your weld rather than being, and this is flat or somewhat concave, it's gonna be more convex likely. But on this, I would have had to have slowed my travel speed a lot down a lot more to try and get it to be, I guess, closer to convex, more or less like it is here. So anyways, your, your rod angle, really important. And let's put it up here. If your rod angle comes in like this, on plate like this, you're gonna have a tendency to deposit a weld here and it may not even tie in onto this top plate. Especially with 6013 rods like I'm running, what'll happen is you'll be depositing a weld on here. The flux is going to go along the edge of this plate and it won't, that metal won't even melt into the plate. It'll literally sit like a bead right on the bottom plate without uh, it tying in. So you can choose somewhere between a 45 degree angle down to slightly less than that. I prefer to weld this at about this kind of an angle. The reason is, is that your molten weld pool is gonna be affected by gravity. It's gonna to wanna to sink down into this lower plate. And if you run a 45 or even a little bit more, it's gonna have a tendency to run down and you'll deposit more weld on here than on the top plate. So by taking a slight angle like this, you're kind of pushing that molten metal up into this top plate more, and that will help you keep a weld from being too much on your bottom plate. This also holds true for fillet welds, where you have a plate that just runs like this and you're running a root pass or just a single pass. You always want to have a slight angle favoring to where the arc is hitting that top part. And as you can see, it's pretty much a 45 degree angle here, and that's despite having an angle more like this. So use the arc force to fight gravity's wanting to sink the puddle. Now when you look at this, I would say the second half, my travel speed was a little bit slower and it filled out a little bit better. Had I used a 7018 rod on this, it would have been filled up perfect to the edge simply because that rod deposits more metal. 6013, not so much. Now let's look at this other side. This one, I went a little bit faster and you can see it's barely up to the toe of that. Still 45 degree angle, not bad. I mean, this weld, if this was me, I would prefer to have more weld on it because ideally you want your weld thickness to be as thick as the thinnest plate you're welding. So one option we have here is to run another pass over this, which I'm going to. Um, another option would be to use smaller rods rather than the eighth inch and do a three pass weld versus a single. Because there is a fundamental limit. 
Like you can only weld so slow with stick and keep depositing metal before you just get so much flux running around and you lose control of your arc and then that's it. So you're pretty limited. Uh, even another option would be to run a 532nd rod, which you can get those at most places that sell welding rods. A 532nd rod would have definitely deposited a weld that would be the proper size on this in a single pass. Now, if you remember from the previous video to this where I talked about butt welds, though, you'll probably in flat position welds, you'll know that going up in rod size, you may run into an issue where you can't shove the rod in, get the root to where it's, you know, the rod sits down in the root and your arc gap might get too long on you and you might have difficulty to control it. So there's always downsides to everything, I guess. So anyways, let's get this camera repositioned and I'll run another pass on this and we'll look at it. Ideally, as you gain experience in your welding career or just screwing around in the garage, you'll be able to do things like single pass welds like this and have them perfect all the time. But when you're starting out, you're simply not gonna be perfect, okay? And that's why it's important, like if you need another pass to get your weld to the proper size, do it. You're better off doing it than leaving it undersized. You know, it's okay to go back and fix your mistakes because you do this enough and pretty soon you don't make mistakes anymore. So I ran another pass over that. Looking pretty good. Ideally you would hit your size in a single pass on this quarter inch plate, but I really think this rod just isn't quite enough. What you wanna watch with doing this when running over the top is you wanna watch your bottom toe line from kind of humping up like a bead of caulk where it has almost like you could pick at it and it's not wetted out. That's gonna be very common. My amperage was pretty much nailed spot on, I would say. I didn't eat away at this top part of the plate too much. And I'll reverse this so you can see. And you can see that bottom line is pretty well wet out. Now, I don't have hot start enabled, and you notice the first about three quarters of an inch, half inch of weld, how it is a little bit, like I said, like the bead of caulk. If I had hot start enabled, that would go away. Simply, the plate was cool at the start, so it's not going to wet out the same. But once it got going, looking pretty decent overall. Now, that's one way to do it. What I'm going to do on this side, which you can see how convex that is. Come on, focus, buddy. Well, I'm going to use uh, 332 rods, and I'm going to do two passes to fill this out. I'm going to run one pretty much on the toe right there, and then one above it. I'm going to be running these at about 80 amps. So let's take a look at this. Not the prettiest looking weld for two passes. My tie-in was a little bit rough. Now, I purposely stopped back here rather than stopping at the same point that the rod would have ran out as here. Anytime you have stops and starts, you wanna make sure that they're staggered. So if you have a stop and restart here, stagger it either go before or after if you have say you did a i don't know a nine pass weld right 
in every start stop or in a line, the probability of a crack starting there is a lot higher simply because if you have porosity in your start, in your restart, well, if the whole line of welds have porosity in at your restart, where's the failure gonna start? Obviously in line right there. So by staggering it, any little bit of porosity, lack of fusion, won't be uh, as serious of an issue. The profile of this is a little bit flatter, I guess, than the other side. Had a little rough of time on the restart there. Again, with 6013, this is pretty decently acceptable. I'd like to improve that and that, but not bad for where we're at. I definitely prefer to run eighth inch rods on this. It's uh, a lot easier overall. Well, with that done, we're gonna go and we're gonna do another set and we're gonna do things a little bit different. So let's get into it. So I got our new set of test plates here. We're gonna do things a little bit different. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tack these up and then we're gonna position them. I'm gonna tack it to the table, but we're gonna position these in essentially an upright position. Now this really doesn't qualify, I would say, as a horizontal weld, because we're gonna actually be welding almost in the flat position. So, and it won't be overhead because if I welded it up like this, yeah, that would be closer to overhead, I guess. But uh, in this position, I wouldn't really call this horizontal. If these were thinner plates, it could be considered horizontal because you know you don't have a ledge to weld on. So let's get these tacked up. So I got my eighth inch rod. I'm at 120 amps. I'm gonna run a pass. And even though this looks different, this is gonna weld much the same with this thick plate as it did in the flat position, since I have this nice ledge to weld to. So for angle, I'm gonna come in at a 45 and slightly less to try and hit this back plate more because gravity will sink the molten puddle into this plate here in front. And we'll weld it out, we'll take a look at it. So let's take a look. It's slightly underfilled because you can see the whole toe line is left. Like the top plate. Let me get this positioned a little bit better here. Let's grab the back side. There we go. Yeah, the top leg of that is sweated in, but from a strength perspective, I mean, this is close to as full strength as you can get. I mean, it's almost the same size as the thickness of the metal. Looking pretty good. Yeah, I like that. You can see the heat affected zone very even overall. I think this is just, if I had a 532nd rod, that would just knock this out of the park in a single pass and be exactly the size that you want. All right, looking good. I'll tack it to the table and then we'll do a three pass on the top of it.
Could use a little bit more cleaning up, but there's our three pass lap weld. It's a lot harder, obviously, to have three solid passes on here than it is a single with the eighth inch or even a 532nd rod. So from a practice perspective, you're going to be better off with uh, the 332, I think. But keep in mind, it's a lot harder to run those rods an eighth inch. I mean, the thing kind of wiggles a little bit more and your arc gap is more critical. It's harder to maintain. Well, let's finish this up. Well, what did we learn today? I learned uh, that 332 rods are a little bit harder to run than eighth inch, especially on this thick of material. I find that it's a hard, lot harder with these 6013s to keep a tight arc gap. The rod burns off real fast and it tends to want a kind of long arc. My three pass weld, not too bad. 6013 doesn't produce like that nice 7018 bead appearance. It's kind of like a cross between a 6011 and a 7018. So I like running the eighth inch rod single pass a lot better. Um, I didn't do it, but another way you could have done this is a first pass could have been a 332nd and then you could have went over it with an eighth inch rod and it would have brought it right out to where you want it. So that's another option you have. You probably notice that welding in the upright position, which is essentially with this thick a plate, just um, flat position, but you could argue and say it's uh, horizontal, but it's not that much harder realistically to weld than flat with a uh, thicker plate. So don't be afraid to try it. It's very important that, you know, real life doesn't have all just flat joints like this. You're going to have to weld stuff like this from time to time. So. I'm sure you can see that all of these require kind of the same thing as beads on plate. Like you need to be able to weld a straight line that's consistent. This is obviously a lot harder than just running a bead on plate, but not really that hard at all. So you don't want to throw this stuff out just yet. These things will be awesome when I do the next video in this series where I'm doing fillet welds. This will work as an upright plate for you. So don't throw these out, not to mention you can run a bunch of passes on here overlapping to get more use out of this. Burn up uh, as many rods as you can on this. All right, if you got any questions, comments, you know where to put them. Thanks for sticking around for the video. See you next time.